Welcome back to the Long Gunner, and today we're going to be going over the Nomad L with e brake on it. Let's go over some of the specs on this thing. The can itself is about eight and a half inches long from the front to the back. It comes with the direct thread 5 8 24 end cap in it. On the front end, it has a 30 cal end cap. It does come with two spanner wrenches, one marked accessories, one suppressor. Those will fit into the notches on whatever accessory you're putting on there and the notches in the can itself. It weighs about 18 ounces, just a little bit over that. Before you add on the e-brake to it. Now the e-brake will take off supposedly one more decibel um, but help reduce a little bit of recoil. It does not come with an end cap on it but it does come with the tool right here that you use to take the end cap off of the can. Just insert those pins in there Twist them out and you take your e brake, screw it right on there, tighten it down, and then use the tool to screw that into the front of the e brake. There we go. For a size comparison, here is the Omega 300 with brake that I normally run so it is definitely bigger than that With the e-brake on this thing it measures about nine and five eighths inches. So it's a thick one Diameter on this is an inch and three quarter where most cans normally are about an inch and a half like this Omega This can's got got a lot of volume to it the back of the suppressor is threaded 1.375 by 24, so it is compatible with any of the Xeno or Chemo mount systems that they make if you want to do a, a quick attach. The can is also rated up to 300 normal mag, and it, I would consider it more of like a, a semi-automatic rated can. Um, you can get it pretty hot and it's going to take it, but I wouldn't go running it on a full auto. So for testing this thing today, we're going to shoot it across multiple different calibers. Um, I don't have a sound meter that's going to work to actually test this on here. I mean, there's a few issues with it. I don't want to pay $3,000 for one specifically for firearms. And if you try to use one on your phone, they generally don't do good enough to uh, actually pick up firearms. Half of them don't even go that high. Um, the other half of that is, is, you know, we're limited by the, the microphone on the camera or then everything may sound differently depending on whether you're listening to this on your phone, doing it on your laptop, across your TV. I mean, we can't get you an accurate representation of what each one of these calibers is going to sound like without you actually being here. That's the hardest part about some of this sound and giving you a, a sample and trying to say, this is what it sounds like. What we will do is I'll shoot each one of these without the, the suppressor on it and then with the suppressor on it. And we'll do a couple things. You'll be able to hear the difference in the volume, you know, the best that we can record it. But we'll also go down range and we'll check point of impact shift since this is a fairly hefty can, um, I have been shooting this a little bit uh, on a couple of these already. I mean, it does give you a little bit of point of impact shift. So let's get to doing some shooting. Let's go over a few of the guns that we're going to shoot with today here. This is my six arc that I built. That's what uh, I bought this suppressor specifically for. Next up here, I'm going to have a 300 Blackout and an AR. Then a Seekins Precision and 7PRC. 
Then we'll do the 223 Ackley Improved on a bolt gun. Moving down to the last one, that is a six Creedmoor Bergera HMR. So that ought to give us a fairly wide reference of uh, signatures, some small caliber stuff, a couple there in the middle, and then a Magnum. First up, let's shoot the six arc. Let's put the can on. Oh, them factory loads are noticeably gassier than my hand loads. Here we'll take a look at our point of impact shift. This is no can, three shots. And right in there. The Nomad L did these three, and the Omega 300 did that. So you've got, oh, you know, inch and a half, two inches worth of point of impact shift, but it is down and right. It's not just horizontal, it's down and right with both of those cans. Next up, let's shoot some 300 blackout, 150 grain supersonics. All right, let's suppress it. Suppressed. Pretty much mandatory that uh, if you're going to shoot a 300 blackout, you got to shoot some subs through it. So here goes some 220 grain Remington subsonics. My camera battery died there, but I only took one shot with the gun unsuppressed because it doesn't like to cycle it. Uh, anyway without the can on it with these subs so now i'll go ahead and take three shots uh with the can on on paper and one shot we'll put on steel just to hear it steel. There we go. Let's take a look at these groups here. This is where I've got that gun zeroed up for those 150s anyway, but that's with the suppressor. And they landed way up here unsuppressed. So you're talking five, six inches worth of drop with that suppressor on it on those supersonics. Now, if you look here, this is the subs. That was the first one I shot, unsuppressed. And then we had first one suppressed, I think that was second, and then third must have been right there. But that doesn't have any point of impact shift to it. Kind of odd, because that other one was kind of an extreme. That's about as far as I've got a gun to change. Next up is a 223 Ackley Improved.
Here's the Ackley Improved. Those three shots were unsuppressed, and then those three shots there were with the suppressor on. So that probably only shifted down maybe, maybe three-eighths to a half an inch, so that's pretty good. Next up is a six creed mower. With the six Creed more, here's the three unsuppressed. And then the first two suppressed were right here. This third one, I could feel heavy bolt closure on that one. These are some uh, test loads that I'm shooting. But that one there ended up way, way low. We'll have to test that again some more. But still overall, um, that point of impact shift isn't real bad. Now getting into a Magnum caliber, uh, we're going to shoot the 7 PRC with uh, 180 grain factory max ammo. Now with the suppressor on. Let's go down and take a look. That can, after that 7 PRC, that is hot. On the third shot, I could already see that there was heat distortion coming off of that. On the 7 PRC, here was the unsuppressed first group, suppressed second group. I could tell on that third shot here, we were getting some heat distortion already, but this gets you the point that that's, oh, about two inches low on point of impact shift from putting that on there. My overall thoughts on the Nomad 30, I mean, it's still warm on the 7 PRC. It does get hot fairly fast with those Magnums. But, uh, I mean, your, your point of impact shift on it, from can to can, it can vary. I mean, we saw today anywhere from six inches to down to half inch on point of impact shift. It really does kind of depend on barrel profile. I mean, this one's kind of thinner, fluted on this hunting rifle. Uh, the six arc is a fairly heavy AR. The 300 blackout is a fairly thin 16 inch AR barrel and it definitely shifted a lot on that one. On the six Creed and on the uh, 223 Ackley Improved, I mean that Ackley Improved has an M24 contour. So it's fairly heavy and that point of impact on that one was barely shifted at all. So it's a pretty wide range and I'll say it, it 
definitely depends on the host that you're putting on it. It does quiet them down immensely with this big can. You can definitely tell um, on the smaller one like the 223, it doesn't have much recoil anyway. And I don't think it has that much gas to actually kind of give you that parachute effect and, and reduce recoil on it. I mean, it does just a little bit, but overall not much. You get into that six Creed, then you can definitely tell. Um, when I had it on my 308 the other day, you could tell on that that it took some off. But on this 7 PRC, on this, on this Seekins, um, it really takes a lot of recoil out of it. This thing probably, oh, I think it only weighs somewhere in the, I think, seven and a half or eight pound range in there. So it's super light. So with those magnums, I mean, it's got some recoil to it. And this thing really tames that recoil down nicely. When it came to group sizes, I'll say that, you know, for the most part, I think that they really did kind of stay the same. You know, on there, it did actually get a little bit better um, on the six arc. That one there, a little tore up on that one. Definitely, you know, stayed the same, maybe helped it out a little bit. But I think that the can did pretty well as far as the accuracy side of it goes. So I'll be using it in some more videos. Um, if you like this video, go ahead, hit that thumbs up button for me, comment down below, and we'll see you on the next one.